Here's T-Bone and Heather on Star 98.3 and 97.7 The Bay. 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, 8.12. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. And joining us on the phone line this morning, we have uh, Dr. Alami, who is a surgeon over at Calvert Health. Good morning, sir. How are you? Uh-oh. Dr. Alami. Oh, Hold on. There we are. Apparently, i got to push all the buttons to make it work. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. I push the buttons on my side. <laughs> there Good. you go. Uh, as, as I was mentioning, uh, you are a surgeon over at the Calvert Health, and one of the fields that uh, you work in, uh, although it's not exclusive to this, is uh, bariatric surgery. Um, this, much like uh, most of America's waistline, just seems to be an industry that is continuing to expand. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We thought that we had peaked uh, 10 years ago, but you, what we find is that numbers are still growing, as is, like you said, the waistlines are still growing. Uh, but more importantly, actually, we know a lot more about the medical problems associated with obesity, and now we can treat them much, much better uh, because of tools like bariatric surgery. And, and doc- so, Dr. Lavi, the, the, it, the process has changed, too. The procedure has, has changed, and, and there are different things available to patients. Is that right? To, to a certain degree, yes. I mean, there's a, we're constantly evolving in terms of the procedures and the surgeries. But the most commonly performed procedures are still uh, ones that have been around for the last uh, 15 years, I'd say. Mm. Uh, so the most common procedure now is uh, laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy, uh, which was invented in 2002, if you may, if you wish. And that sort of took off around 2009, 2010, uh, became the most prevalent procedure in the mid, uh, mid part of the last decade. Um, the other uh, commonly performed procedure is the gastric bypass. Now, these are surgical procedures mm-hmm. uh, where you go in, you alter the anatomy and so on. But there are other uh, procedures on hand that are less surgical, if you wish, like the intragastric balloon. Um, so it's an interventional procedure where we place a balloon inside the stomach and that sort of curves appetite and uh, brings on satiety. Um, there are the, the effectiveness is also related to the uh, to the invasiveness, if you wish. Right, right, so, right. So things like the intragastric balloon are less effective than, say, gastric bypass or sleeve. But then again, not everyone needs the exact same thing. So, uh, you know, ba- uh, bariatric surgery is not a one shoe fits all sort of thing. Right. We, who who we is have a, to tailor it? Yeah. Who's a good patient when you say tailor it? I mean, not everybody is a patient for. Uh, bariatric surgery. So when you meet with someone and talk to them about their health, because being overweight, it it really can wreak havoc on a person's health. But somebody comes in and they talk to you and they're considering, you know, bariatric surgery. What do you suggest or what do you look for in that patient? The first thing is that they come to us considering it. So patient investment, if you wish, Mm -hmm. Uh, them taking their health seriously enough to be willing to make significant changes to lifestyle and so forth. Because when you look at it, you can't pinpoint a single factor that caused obesity. So it's not just how much we eat or what we exercise or our genes or so. It's actually all of those factors Mm -hmm. combined. And so making a change to uh, a lot of those factors is going to be the key portion of success. Surgery plays an important role, but it's not the only thing. Well, how, so, do you, how do you get somebody motivated? How do you get somebody to get off the couch, maybe change their diet, because they've been stuck in this position for so long and they're heavy, they do not see a way to get the weight off because it is a slow process if you do it with diet, diet and exercise. How do you get somebody motivated to just start the process? Heather, it's not just a slow process. It's a frustrating process mm-hmm. with diet and exercise because most people... Tell me about who, it, doctor. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> most, most people who need these types of operations the most have tried all of these diet and exercise mm-hmm. things and have failed on the long term with them before they can come considering surgery. Right. And so I find that the first thing I need to do is to provide them with hope and information, education. Um, so on the first consultation, what everyone gets from me is, other than you know the the usual thing you get at the doctor's office, is a binder explaining what obesity is, what the different treatment options are, what to expect from our program, whether it's surgical or non-surgical treatment. Because you know 
we do offer a lot of support for patients who are not ready for surgery as well. I, uh, Different programs with, to help with that. I, I watched your bio um, as in, in a little bit of a history about how you became a surgeon, uh, and, and it was very interesting. You, you said in, in, in the bio that it is a calling that, that, that you, you sub, uh, subscribe to the idea that it, that it is a calling. And if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm, I'm kind of kicking around the idea of going into this field, they probably shouldn't. Um, Absolutely. What, so, okay, well, walk me through that process. At what point in your life did you realize, okay, my, you talked about uh, taking apart the VCR and putting it back together. Uh, at, what, at what point did you go, okay, I, I'm not going to do VCR repair. I'm going to be a surgeon. You know, it's part of uh, it's part of my genes. Also, both of my parents were physicians. My older brother is a physician. I was surrounded by. Oh yeah, you can't be a VCR <laughs> repairman. You yeah. can't show up at Thanksgiving <laughs> repairing VCRs. <laughs> but here's the irony of it: my uh, my dad never encouraged me to go into medicine. He's like, you know, you you like your outdoors. You like to go out. You like to have fun and all of that. You're committing to a lifetime of being on call, yeah. doing all of it. And I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And I honestly, I still cannot see myself doing anything else. So when I get called and have to come in at 3 in the morning, it's uh, it's annoying to get out of bed. And, but the minute I'm in the car driving to come into work, it's uh, it's a different matter. Yeah, because somebody's counting on you. And, and, they, and, they, and they need you to come through. And it's so interesting with bariatric surgery, uh, doctor, it, you can see remarkable... You can see how you help. You, the surgeon, can see. Sure, heart surgeon, the person is up and walking and doing, and they're not blue anymore, and they've got some rosy (laughs) colored cheeks. But with bariatric surgery, the transformation is astronomical. The transformation is phenomenal. And I have a board of before and after pictures in my clinic that patients just love to get on. Uh, It's when when you're in training and you don't see the long term results, you hate the idea of bariatric yeah. surgery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but then the minute you see a patient three months, six months, a year, five years out from their surgery and they're doing so great, it it is the most it's the most rewarding thing you can think of. Well, I, I will tell you, I uh, I think what you're doing is is fine work over there, and uh, of course, Calvert Health is an exciting. Uh, array of things that they can offer, and uh, and you and your skills are one of them. So, uh, uh, calling whatever you want to call it, fantastic. We're lucky to have you. <laughs> well, it's great being here, and I'll tell you, we're doing some great work at Calvert. We're uh, we're really expanding our services, whether it's surgical and other services. Um, you know, the bariatric program. There was a definite need that was identified a few years ago, which is what I was mm-hmm. hired to start and. Um, we're taking off beautifully. We've uh, we've finished over 120 operations. Wow! Uh, all doing very well, thank God. And uh, but there's a lot more to come at Covered Health. So keep your eyes tuned. Thank, thank you. you. Ears, thank guess. you, Doctor Alami. We appreciate your time. We know how busy you are. So thank you for go joining us. Go heal somebody. Yeah, go get them. Go <laughs> fix. I got a VCR that needs right. to be rewired. I'm not time to talk to silly <laughs> DJs. Go fix somebody. Uh, Heather, no one knows what a VCR is anymore. <laughs> I know. I do, I know, sir. That's one of the things sh- that made. That's one of the things that made me laugh. And I was, and me, I was like, I wonder if it's VHS or Beta. <laughs> what he was doing. All right, oh, thank you, sir. It. Thank you, Doctor Lamy. Right, bye bye. <laughs> VCR oh, yeah. repairman, look, look, bariatric if your surgeon. Your mom is a, uh, I think he said a surgeon or a medical doctor. Dad is. Your brother is. You cannot walk <laughs> in on Thanksgiving going. I'm be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> no. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, no. He seems no, like a no, very no. nice guy no, and changing no, no, no. changing lives every st- single day. Uh, every single day. I tell you that it, it is frustrating with the diet and the and you know when you've been heavy your whole life like I have. You know, it's tough and there's nothing trust me, there's not uh, everybody has ideas for you. When you're the fat girl, they they all have ideas of what to do. You can't tell a fat girl anything about diet and exercise. You know why? She's an encyclopedia of knowledge. So it's great that that option is out there for for people who are struggling. And we appreciate him for calling in. He truly, does good work. Yeah, uh, great work. I love that thing where he where he talked about that in his little bio thing. Um, when young medical doctors would come to him and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Don't do it." He said, we told him, don't do it. If you have to ask, it's not for you. You need a calling. 
What what do you want? Right. What do you what do you, you feel like it, you want to do at a cellular level? This is what I was put here to do. Then they'll do it. Yeah, he sounds like a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Hard thank argue. you for calling hard, the show. Hard There's to argue with hard that one. Hard to argue. Uh, Eight twenty two. Phone lines are open for you. Let's see what the weather's doing. Southern Maryland weather. All righty for today. Partly sunny with isolated showers and thunderstorms. High of eighty four tonight. Partly cloudy with a low of sixty six. And for tomorrow, mostly sunny with showers and thunderstorms. A high of eighty five degrees. Now high tides today. Chesapeake Beach at two twenty p.m. Brooms Island at 12.54 p.m., Point Lookout at 11.39 a.m., and how about Indian Head at 6.34 tonight? Currently, Dunkirk, 71 degrees, Hollywood, 70, and White Plains, 70. Good morning, Southern Maryland traffic. 